Right, hi everyone. Uh, this is the me packing up for uh, the games exposition expo, and uh, these are the games I'm actually going to bring with me. I've decided to bring two. I couldn't find Dragon Masters, but uh, it's got to be around somewhere, and I'm not going to worry too much about it. So I'll find it when I find it. But I actually forgot all about this. Well, I was looking for uh, Dragon Masters, and uh, it's called Sandry, and it's, you know, should be too bad. So I'm going to take that with me. I'm going to take Blood Ro Royal with me as well, and because uh, oh, I had to rewrite the adventure for Dungeon Crawl Classics. So I got my bag to take to bring back bits and pieces with. Uh, take that with me because it uh, fight the events fighting fancy. Uh, I've got sag in there. I'll probably leave it in there actually. Oh no, I'll take that out. Uh, my character sheets from the new RPG I'm working on. Uh, the adventures I the adventure for it I put in there. Yeah, Dungeon Crawl Classics, and uh, yeah, uh, that's basically it. Um, it's only a few hours away now uh, before um, I'm off, and the next time you s will see me, um, we'll be at the station, the coach station, r um, ready to go off for... Uh, three days, really great days at um, Birmingham and the Games Expo 2014 and I hope to see some people there. Uh, till later. Hi everyone, uh, I'm a chance really to um, do any vids until now. Uh, so uh, I've arrived at my hotel. Uh, actually, really smart hotel, really nice actually. And um, just check myself in. Extended stay for the weekend. Uh, uh, got the Games Expo little mag here. Uh, so much going on. Oh, just gonna spend uh, you know about like ten minutes or so just to relax before going off and uh, having a bite to eat before um, doing anything else. Yeah, but I just, uh, my game still loves me. Oh, oh, that looks interesting. Just over two years ago, uh, Andrew Harman, long-time game fan and author, started designing a game like a bewildered Frodo, he only set foot on an unexpected journey that would take him further than he ever imagined. Hmm, looks interesting actually. It's really interesting. Yeah, plenty of ads and stuff, Mutant Chronicles and all sorts of ads for different things. The Expo Guide. And the map of the area. It's even bigger this year. Oh boy, not half. And the yeah, Call of Cthulhu, which I actually really, really enjoy, actually. But um, I think, you know, certain members of my group, maybe less so, but uh, maybe just, you know, just got to play a bit more. Some research. Uh, yeah, plenty, plenty happening. I'm really looking forward to today. I got a uh, uh, Shoran's game. We got Shoran's game at eight o'clock. Um, we will be also be testing our own RPG that we've created. 
uh, doing a little bit of te play test um, while here. Um, yeah, Chris Berry's going to be here as well, actually. Really looking forward to meeting him. It's... Uh, going to be an awesome weekend actually and should be meeting some new people um, people that I've known only from YouTube for the first time so I'm really looking forward to it, all sorts of games it's uh, going through here um, yep, Ian and Ian and some Steve Jackson is here and hopefully I will get the chance to ask him uh, what is going on with the paperback versions of um, their uh, Point and Fancy game books. I hopefully will get to a chance to ask that question. I just have to see and hopefully I can actually get it on YouTube as well but we'll have to see. It's a bit, you know, nerve-wracking while well, um, uh, you know, asking to see if you can take the vid. Although I remember that actually as a kid, I did the engine. Got their own board game of it as well. Well, that's it, and I'll be taking some more footage over the next couple of days. And yeah. Shall we do it again? Well, no, no, just say what happened. Uh, yeah, he rolled for his uh, food, it rolled a five. It was a. Because I, I did it, thought it was recording, and I didn't press the button properly, so. But so yes, roll a five, so it's a Swiss burger. Yeah. And I'm Swiss. getting a veggie burger. Hello! Yeah, and I'm not sure yet for me, but I'm going to have a look in a minute. But yeah, that was a bit silly, but never mind. Yeah, at the yeah. bar at the moment, so but plenty of people around. And that, but uh, yeah, looking forward to what the weekend brings. Oh. It's a quick one to show me the uh, games really break down. There's a huge array of games. All sorts here actually, aren't there, Gary? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we got the innovation. Loads and loads of it's Shadows of Camelot. That does look interesting, actually. So much to give a, uh, have a try later on. Mm -hmm. Anything, anything about the game? All right, well, I'll talk to YouTube. That's no problem. Hello, YouTube. You probably know me. I'm somebody who's retired from YouTube videos for some time. That's right. Outsider 68. Um, I'm with Mark Crew at the Games Convention. We've had a few new players join us tonight. Um, to play the game of mine, not a thorns. Uh, are you quite happy to join in? Well, I'll, yeah. I'll let Mark introduce them. Yeah. Right, Richard. Uh, ben. Ben. It's late at night as well. Just so yeah. I'll add that. It's very late now. It's about half past ten, quarter to eleven. Everybody's tired. I've been gaming for 12 hours solid, had a fantastic success here. I actually made this look very easy. <laughs> I've got to give him full credit for that, so very impressed, been a great game, great start to the expo, really looking forward to Saturday, so that's a quick report from me, I look forward to seeing you all soon, I'm sure. Here's the main hall, a lot of the gaming is going on, and there's something going on here this year. Uh, some Game tower thing. It's pretty awesome actually. And yeah, it's gonna be a whole lot busier tomorrow. So, in the uh, trade hall at the moment, it is very noisy and very busy. There's all sorts of stuff going on. Uh, literally, I'm going to have a good look around and uh, probably pick up some fishes throughout the day.
might be cheeky and wonder. So I fancy this big role playing game. Yep. Um, it's set to play Tavern Scum in Elizabethan London. Um, the games master creates a tavern as an NPC, yep. essentially. Uh, the book comes with one already as a sample one. Yep. Um, complete with rumours and you can randomly generate jobs for people to do because oh, they need money so. to survive yeah. eight points um, so we've got that to make it easy uh, but it's if you know anything about the old school renaissance games um, this is based on the swords and whispery white box engine so it's um classic sort of old school fantasy role playing game instead of a medieval paradigm it's an elizabethan paradigm essentially so it's um it's yeah. Um, so it's it's very sort of old school. It's been modified quite heavily, um, yeah. particularly with my experiences with fighting with board swords and things like that. Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, there's he uses character classes, but they all gain experience points in different ways. Yeah. Um, so uh, the fighting man gets it from fighting, the scoundrel gets it on spending money, yeah. and the cunning man gets it from um, helping other people. Yeah, right. So they have access to herbalism, doubt, and that sort of thing. They also have to be careful not to get hanged as a witch, yeah. um, by disguising with religious undertones. But it, it is a fantasy Elizabethan game, so you're not expected to know everything about Elizabethan home. It's, yeah. it's, imagine it like Dungeons and Dragons, but yeah. in an Elizabethan paradigm. So, in you know, Dungeons and Dragons, they don't have a, an accurate rendition of medieval no, life. No, they don't. Yeah. Uh, you can do anything you want with it. We leave it. So, we, we, we try to keep as much, we give a bare minimum of setting information, and there are things like prices, um, ideas for, for jobs, and, and things like gladiatorial combat and things that were common. But we, don't, we try not to put too much of it in there because we don't want people to think that they have to know everything yeah. there is to know. If you've ever seen an episode of Black Out of the Second, yeah. you can play this game. Yeah. Um, we also got a, a war game rule set as well. Yes, this is, this is our sorceress fantasy war game rules. It's, um, it's very slim, but we, we try and pare it down to the absolute minimum that you need to get a good, um, a good game. It's um, sort of a classic fantasy war game sort of bent with it, um, designed as the basis for expansion yourself as well as. But it gives you plenty of elaborations in the back here. For you to make the games more interesting, including the, the sorceries which give it its his name, um, and several ways of generating the, the values, including assigned combat values. Right. Um, so you can build them based on what the figure is. Oh, right. Or if you want a quick game, you just want to get up and play, um, it has all the numbers sorted for you. There, basically. Um, so a basic game with uh, like this here it takes about 10 15 minutes to play. Um, but if you've got a referee, you've got a large collection of figures, you can use the assigned combat values to play a proper traditional fantasy war game, referee, um, heavy role playing, lots of figures. Lots of, but it's only a pound? Yes, it's just to cover printing costs. Oh, um, that's Because awesome. we, we give away the PDF for free, um, but we're expanding with further PDFs. It's just to cover printing costs. Oh, that's so worth it. That is, that is worth a pound. Excellent, thank you. Um, and then of course this is our yep. abstract chance strategy game, numerics. Ooh. Okay. So um, each player has six pieces. Yeah. The objective of the game is to reduce your opponent to three pieces. Oh. Um, the dice limit where you can move on the board so you can take chances with the game. So unlike most abstract strategies, there's an element of being able to take risks. Yeah. Um, but not so much. You know, this, it moves in certain patterns and so on. Um, but, um, so when, when your turn, you roll the three dice. So two, two and two, that doesn't give me many options. That means I can place a piece on a two, two or a two. Um, so I can place him there. Let's say the reds, there we go, six, one and three. Um, yeah. So let's say a couple of turns have gone through. Yeah. And we've got some pieces. And you don't want to place any more pieces. You'd rather move them about. So you can do this in the same way, you roll the dice, instead of placing a piece, you can move one to an adjacent space that matches one of those numbers, so he can move to there. He couldn't move all the way over here, so once you've got all your pieces out on the table, 
things slow down for you, yeah. so it's worth, it's worth keeping a piece or two back as long as possible, yeah. just to give you more threat. Um, you capture an opponent piece by getting three pieces adjacent to it. So that, that would count as a capture on that piece, as would that, and that as well, um, and that as well. There's a large number of patterns, we give them all there um, for easy you know, visualisation. Yeah, it, it sort of, so that would capture that. Also, you can protect spaces as well. So yeah. if you've got that there, it means that the red can't then move into that space or that space. Even the capture, those two spaces get blocked off from you. Oh. So, um, so we, we now uh, provide some tactical advice out in there yeah. for new players. Because um, obviously we've been playing it for years. So we, yeah. We know all the tips and tricks. The most important one is if you lose, blame the dice. Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, if you've got people of equal skill, the dice will generally resolve the difference. But that's, to my mind, better than a stalemate. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, at least you can still come up with a fun game. But even after years, we still end up with uh, ways of playing it. There is also an app on Android yeah. for it. Okay. Um, it's, it's just if you just search for numerics, uh, you should find it on, on the App Store, on yeah. Google Play. Um, there's a free version and a paid version. Unfortunately, the, the paid version is no longer supported as such, but the free version is more than that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. No, thanks for that. Um, YouTube, um, are I okay? Okay. Okay. I didn't realise yeah. that we were It's just Dodeca. Yeah. It depends on what it plays. Five elements. Yeah. When you first set up the deck, you put three cards down, and then players take it in turns to either take a card or play a card. If the card reaches 13, the amount that's on these cards adds up to 13, then the deck is bust and that player right. has to take all of the cards into their hand. Okay. Now you're only trying to collect one set. Okay. So if you're collecting so a set of two places. Not particularly water, nice, if, I say so yeah. Myself. Yeah. if this was your hand at the end of the game, you'd have five points for your set, I'll go there. minus one for each other card that is not a part of your set. Place. Yeah. So that would be five minus three. And so your total would be two at the end of the game. You miss your entire turn. Right. Okay. And then so it's a pushy look kind of game. Yeah. If um, you get to twelve and you so play you another blocked. card, if it's another two, you lose the game instantly while they go blocked, 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 yeah. blocked. You're safe. And that forces the next player to push their luck to see if they get another two, yeah. or a three, or a four, or whatever is the end yeah. of that that line. Or take a card they don't necessarily want that it's going to add to the minus so in their hand. Yeah. So, so you can get two points. It's amazing how quickly those minuses can build up if you're taking cards rather than putting them at the end here. Yeah. But um, if you go bust, you've got a big problem generally. Unless there's lots of cards in the, in the set you're collecting and you want to go bust. Yeah. And you play a card and find that you can't. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So and then your opponent yeah. gets all of those cards that you were actually wanting because there's some high value yeah. cards in your set really don't want you going out on the table. Another point. So right. this is why it's got go the there, um, just the frustration rating and the laugh rating because um, yeah. it's funny when it doesn't happen to so you. So get yourself <laughs> a point or yeah. lose me a point. Oh, so. And that is essentially yeah, I didn't think about that. Okay, yeah, thanks for that. Cool. Right, go on. Okay, so this is Brave the Elements. It's, it's a game of resource management and hand management where you're using your cards in a multitude of different ways. So you're using them to either take actions or punch them as disasters against other players' locations or defend against uh, disasters played by other players. So it's very strategic in how you're using your cards to uh, to the best effect and putting locations in front of you and instructs them to create your strategy. And so as well, how you play disasters, you're trying to match the strength value with the defence value of the location. And if you do that, you roll the dice, 
Yeah, based on based, customized, based on the word there. So, and then you match any of the, so you've got air and air, that matches. And then you use other cards in your hands, the defending player does, to try and prevent the last last by matching the fire as well. So figuring out how to get victory points, that's the end of the game, to finish the most victory points. So right. each location has its own victory point bag, <laughs> and at the end of the game that's counted up. Each location said, has their own special ability, so you're trying to craft a strategy around there. And so the game is played in all phases of another draft. But so it's very quick paced and easy to set up as well. Uh, you can just jump straight into the game, everyone then draws six cards and when everyone goes around constructing one location at a time until everyone has five. And the next phase is everyone takes one action, that goes round, and then it goes round to the tracing. Infiltrating is different from punching with sarses, where you're rolling the dice and trying to match the defense value of a location. But you're adding bonuses which you which you've built and played actions to get particular tokens which add to your infiltration value. So, because on its own, the dice is unlikely to get the locations that use six and seven. But the thing is, if you fail the dice roll, it's never bad because you you then put one of your followers on the location. And what these do is that they reduce the defense value of a location by one. And then you get an extra victory point when you take that location next. So it's never a bad thing at all. And in a lot of cases, it's a better strategic move to actually put it on a location which to weakness so you can play with a particular disaster which is hard for a same person to prevent. Because you, you can see what they have in front of them because yeah. they have a water token there. So they can use that to defend against disasters which you play. Yeah. But as well you're thinking you can take out that water token and that makes it easier to take next time. <laughs> so that's the general gist of the game. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. very easy to get into, but hard to master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, when will this be estimated to release the best? It's currently it's Kickstarter. Let's do the next So you think yeah, that's yeah. 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 that previously. Yeah. Uh, game for uh, uh, as well. Um, that's a game about many concepts where you're using knights represented by points in the die and moving them across territories uh, to gain victory points. The first 13 points is the winner. But it's very back to how it's played and very card driven and tactical to how it's played. So you're using your cards to the best effect to actually, uh, whether you want to add to your value of and see how which battles you want to win every time you don't particularly want to win where you need to go. Yeah, very tactical. So, um, I've got a great amount of replay value in this play because of the setup, it's a more of the setup, depending on the play as well. And as well, you've got so many combinations in in artifacts that you have in front of you. You can have one crown, one orb, and one setup. Okay, yeah. Thank you. I'll just sort of quickly show you guys the starlet that seems to be just floating off the ground. I think it's just awesome. Really awesome. Oh, and there's the uh, TARDIS as well. And there's another darker starlet somewhere. Um, hi, uh, my name is Neil Gow and I'm uh, part of Omni Hundred Games, which is a proud member of the UK RP Design Collective, um, which is a group of independent publishers in the UK that gang together to help each other publish and sell books. 
Uh, these are my books. These are uh, Peter Corners and Judy and Anna. They are Napoleonic adventure games uh, where you play honestly not sharp and not horn not honest. Hello, Mr. Cornwell. Um, and you, you, you kill French people. That's that's where the games are. <laughs> I really do not want to be exterminated, but this Dalek is on the move. It was just now. Suddenly stopped. That's <laughs> just awesome. That's awesome. do not fear. I don't know what you look like. You generate the guy. I haven't seen them so Is that out? It's looking at me. I really don't want to get exterminated. <laughs> oh, that's just so awesome. Actually, just before I go, just had a chat with uh, Steve Jackson and Ian Stone, and it was pretty awesome. I um, really enjoyed the chat, and I'll say more later on. Oh yeah, awesome. That is really awesome. You don't hear from me, you can talk to me afterwards. But this is um, uh, the, the origins of one of my favourite forms of gaming, which is uh, quite a fancy uh, I was there as a little one after you all at the Penguin School Book Club. And there was this bizarre book called War of the Top Mountain. And one of my, my school teacher, my, my school teacher said, You might like this book, and that became a look at this so and just entered the entire world. And uh, it's become a real fantasy, a, a real obsession with collecting all the books. So without further ado, the two guys have created the whole thing.
bla 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 bla
we were working okay, so uh, five, six days a week on the
I'm with, I'm at the, uh, uh, a stall with an artist, she Black Dragon, who should just explain her, her stuff and there you go, there you go. I'm a full-time freelance artist, I work within the gaming industry in RPG books and I also work on the art licensing products, um, so I do a whole mix of things between um, fantasy, gothic, uh, basically you name it, anything I'll have a go at it. <laughs> It's been a very good convention. Yesterday was well, we were up, it basically did so well that it was about 250 percent better than I've done at any other convention. So it's been that good. I'm rather exhausted, but it's been worthwhile coming to Expo. And um, lovely big display this time. I'm next to a fellow artist, Jill, so it's been very relaxed. It's wonderful seeing the fans' reactions towards some of my new work, especially to some of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Zoom stuff that's coming out. Yeah, yeah. Um, the latest books were um, Call of Cthulhu 7 and the Player's Handbook. Mm. Um, it's been really good. Um, also, seeing how people are taking to my new lead into the licensing products as well. Yeah, yeah, all this. Basically, we're working on a range of things, which a lot of people have actually sold out as well. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah all that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a freelance artist since about 2007, and um, we just sort of built up from there, starting work with them. Both actually, at the same time, a t-shirt company called Dark Side and also Windows Publishing. And it progressed into this at Kepler 7. And obviously, from there, other smaller sort of like, um, companies and then private commissions and more um, t-shirt companies like The Mountain as well. And then Nemesis um, Now and that on the licensing. Um, obviously, my son sort of dotted around in different books and things like that. <laughs> Yeah. And it's on the cover of the uh, oh, it's the cover of the program. Yeah, the program, yeah. Yeah, that's one of my faves actually. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so that, that was good. And Mike, who's in Cape Brown, uh, 
Please be pleased to see him on display. So it's actually an early preview, so it's very kind of him to let me show it early. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, hi there, I'm Andrew Harmon. I'm here at UK Games Expo having a fantastic time. We've just been playing games after games after games after games of Frankenstein's Bodies. This is the game that I've been working on for two and a half years. It's currently on Kickstarter and it's all about um, surgery in Frankenstein's laboratories. One of the things you're trying to do, it plays two to six players, you are working to try and create the finest body parts that you possibly can to uh, impress Frankenstein. So you can put body parts down uh, on the table in front of you, you've got two laboratories to work in. At the end of the game, if they're matched in terms of colour and gender, so if they're all, say, blue and all female, you get extra bonus points for that. Um, uh, the way you get the body parts to put down in front of you is by stealing them from other people um, by surgery. So you can literally play a card, rip somebody's arm off and put it in play. If you time that wrong, it's going to end up infected. Um, infected parts score nothing. There are ways to stop that happening. You can bring in these guys called uh, master surgeons who protect cards from being stolen while they're there and give you extra points. Um, it's just fun, very interactive game. An awful lot of people are having a great deal of fun with it, which is fantastic. We've been played off our feet in this weekend, and it's just, I'm just absolutely delighted. So yeah. we're doing well. It's kick-starting until June the 6th, early on June the 6th, which is Saturday. I think that's Saturday. I might get confused now. But Saturday, the first Saturday in June, anyway. And okay. um, we are so close to the funding that it's actually going to work it's going to happen we're going to get this game out there oh brilliant in time oh, that's for good. that is good news and i'm delighted right hi everyone uh just finished the uh we've just been back come back from the uh, games expo it's a wonderful weekend i've got for you uh some really great footage i think this video will be the best Ever, but uh, how do you think it went? Yeah. We can. Luckily, exhausting, but a really fun time. Yeah, and you, Jess? Yeah, it was super awesome. We were there an extra day compared to last year, and it was worth it was worth the money. So it was quite expensive. Yeah, that's the only thing. Yeah, it was, but I mean, it was just worth it, you know. But I came back thinking I wanted to do more things next year. I'd like to have more role-playing games. And I'd like to get into one of the tournaments. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful weekend. It certainly was. You know, and uh, highlights? Oh, highlights. Well, the game of Sean Corners was certainly a highlight. Yeah, definitely. Um, we managed to be one of only two groups out of 18, I believe. That managed to survive, and we managed to on the skin of our teeth, I think. Yeah. But we came up with a few ingenious ways of uh, escaping that prison, um, which was the aim of the adventure. Mm. Um, other highlights was I discovered a, a new game, which I think is awesome, which I'll be showing you a bit later. Yeah. Um, and just sort of meeting people again, making new friends. Yeah. You know, and. Yeah. You know, just having a break really it's yeah yeah and for you Jess what's the highlights um yeah I think it was just really good to meet people like getting the impression that we'll go every year we'll meet the same people who come quite on an annual basis um so that's that's quite cool so we're making friends yeah um we had a good get game playing that Arthurian game I yeah like Shadow that. Over Camelot, I think it was called. Yeah, yeah. I was the traitor. You were a traitor, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it was quite cool because you had to do certain tasks, <laughs> but then you were paranoid about who was loyal to King Arthur and who was the traitor. And we all thought Gary was the traitor, but then we found out it was Mark. Yeah, yeah that's Everyone my manipulation. I'm the traitor. I don't know why, because I never <laughs> turned out to be. It must be the shifty eyes. That was that was part of my plan to uh, try to make it that you were the traitor. Yeah, 
But then towards the end, I'd take more risks. Mm. Although the loyalists win, it was a close call. I think we had seven white and then there were six, six black. Yeah, well, I think it was more, we had like eight white, I think, and there was five black in the end. Yeah. But it was close. But the, the whole thing is, it got to the point where we all knew who the traitor was, but it wasn't tactically advantageous to out him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you knew um, towards the end, yeah. But the thing is, you knew, but you wouldn't didn't know for sure. And if we'd rest risked wrong, then they would have won. So mm. Yeah. Well, my my highlights over the weekend. Um, actually, I did meet Steve Jackson in Livingstone. That was great. I didn't get to ask the question about books. But I did say the books were hard to get of. And he did say, you know, you can get them from eBay. But that was great. Um, I met Chris Barry at the end. Um, that was just a pure fluke because I went to get a, yeah, a certain book so I can give to a, a, a club in Bristol. Um, yeah, well, not, not club necessarily, but uh, there's a pub that does the war gaming. And there was a book that cost a pound, actually. It's uh, uh, this one. And I'll be, uh, you know, donating that to the, the library in the pub. But yeah, it was just an awesome few days, and obviously Sean's uh, game, and just the, you know, doing the little videos, uh, meeting the, um, just new people, meeting the um, uh, uh, road DM, uh, that was great, you know, and just being able to, you know, put together this uh, YouTube vid as well was just a pleasure to do. So yeah, uh, on the uh, things that we got... Um, yes, I got first of all it's this top. Yeah. Uh, I thought the artist did some amazing pictures. Did I? Yeah. I can't remember her name. Though. Yes, but she's, she's yes, the, the interviews on here you would have seen it by now. So uh, yeah, the interviews on on here. Um, um, I've got this card thing called Libya. Yeah, we had a quick play. Uh, to, uh, today, and yeah, that's a fun little balancing game. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite a simple game. But yeah, it's quite fun. I think it's good to play with people who aren't hardcore gamers. Yeah, that is very true. It would be interesting playing that when you're a bit, you know, mm. drunk as well. Yeah. And uh, for you, Gary. Um, well, I think Jess had a few more things, didn't you? Oh, yeah, oh, yes, last, you did. The last game. Um, this yeah. is called... Um, it's... Oh, yeah, there's Inter some books. Yeah. It's called Intergalactic Protection Agency. And I think the idea is each person is an agent. You have up to four players and a minimum of two players. I think the idea is you want to shoot the other agent or lower their life points. And there's like a range of cards that can help the agents. You've got walls that the agent can hide behind so they're not in the line of sight of the other agents. Um, yeah, and it's just an interesting game and it was just nice to have another, ga another game that we could play with. Yeah, exactly, yeah. A lot of deep ten to the game as well, actually, they're hiding. Yeah, and a lot of dice. There's a lot of dice. Not a lot of dice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Ye
I, uh, I bought this book here called Era, which is rather interesting. It's um, a role play system designed for one to two players plus a GM. For those situations where hardly anyone's turned up, which mm. can happen, you know. Um, and it's also good for, you know, like if you have children to sort of get them into, interested into um, role playing, I guess. Um, but for us, um, it's mainly for those sort of short s sessions where there's only a few of us. Um, so I'm looking forward to sort of playing that with everyone. Um, but I think one of the main things I bought um, after yeah, finding out main, about main it, really sort of, I, uh, a bit heavy, is Mage Wars. Yeah, really great game yeah, actually. I, I went a bit crazy and I more or less bought all the bits and bobs after having a few games, play testing it and uh, yeah, I I all sorts of other sort of videos bad. online. Oh, it's only the light. I'm just trying to get that down. Yeah. yeah. Um, as I said, I've got all the expansions for it as well. And we've we've played, I think, what, about five games? All in, well, I've played about five games yeah. all in all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I I played I, I played one, you know. Well, you know, we were uh, me and Jess were um, uh, together against um, Gary, mm. just uh, learn a little bit of the rules. But uh, I found it a really great, really interesting game, actually. Mm. I mean, it, I would argue it's better than Magic in, in certain regards. It's not a collectible card no, game. No, because you've got. All the, you've got all the cards there. Yeah, you've got all the bits. And a lot of cards as well. Yeah, I mean, at, at this current count, we have 973 cards. Um, not all, some of them are duplicates, of course, but, uh, you know, the the way it works is very different to Magic, say, where you've got a deck. You've got a, a spell book of sorts. Um, shall I show them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. got time to For example, here's the Warlock spellbook. Um, you have a series of spellbooks, one for each of the mages, and you actually select your spells from your spellbook. You can select two, yeah, which is really neat. You can select two each round to use or not, depending. Um, usually, you'd have a lot more spell cards than this, but. We were using this for an apprentice mode game, which is sort of learning the ropes. Yeah. Um, and all the mages at the moment, because I bought a few of the extra spell books, now have their own unique spell book. Yeah. And it's just really quite nice because you're there facing off this other person, really feeling like a mage, flicking through your spell book, thinking, what am I going to use next? Yeah. Uh, you know, and it provides a lot of interesting tactics. We've got, you've got this huge arena as well. Which is another difference from magic. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a big board. Really is a rather big arena. And you've got these sort of zones. Mm. So. And you said you can buy other different arenas as well. well apparently, um, there's also some placemats, sort Place of rubberized mat. versions of these, which I think might be better. Um, and there's this arena in. What they call Westlock. Yeah. But there's also a different arena which you can buy as well. Mm. Uh, it is predominantly a a one v one, so a, a you know a duel. Yeah. Um, where it's two players. However, it is possible to do four player, and of course two people can always um, work together using a single mage. Um, and that's been fun as well, hasn't it, Marcus? Yeah. Guys did that. Yeah. Um, but as a as a general rule, um, I think you know I think it's a rather fun game. Mm. Uh, but it does take a bit of time to play, um, particularly if you're really sort of being quite competitive. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of um, attempts and then counter effects you know we're trying to deal with it so you might bring something out and they might 
attempt to cancel it or turn it or do something to it. And like magic, that's all about remove, you know, taking your opponent to zero life points. Mm. But it's just a lot more sort of complex than magic in a lot of ways, while still having some of the tactics, but also having um, a physical sort of movement on the on the board, rather yeah. than having it sort of static. So yeah, mm. I mean, I'm I've been really impressed, mm. and it was impressive enough for me to get the entire. Yeah. Really. Yeah. That has just been one real wonderful uh, weekend, and I got to congratulate all the people that uh, took part in organising it, um, the cool players as well. Uh, you know, people that dress in costume. Um, the the guy that initially sell it up, John Dodd. Actually, I got to chat to him as well, and what, what, what a lovely, uh, amazing guy he is. Uh, it's just a wonderful weekend. Uh, also, you know, um, actually, when I was um, um, over at the store for the Invite Fence Fighting Fantasy, you know, for um, uh, stuff like... That's another purchase of mine, uh, Warlock Fire Top Mountain. Uh, for Ryan Games. Uh, there was a kid about eight years old, um, and you know, eight, nine years old, and actually seeing him getting the votes for that essay for the first time was just an amazing feeling for me, seeing that I've been into the gaming for 30 years, and seeing it, you know, the, the, the next generation, um, uh, getting into role playing for the first time was just an amazing feeling. Also, um, you know, um, John Dodd, um, the main organizer, uh, pointed over to a, um, uh, actually, um, a load of school teachers, with uh, some children as well, and he was saying they're they're all gamers and uh, they're coming along to the. Uh, 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 to the show and that, and I thought that was just uh, absolutely awesome as well. So yeah, it's just been an amazing time. I'll just quickly show you the stuff that I got before I um, clock off, which is, uh, you know, this selection, Star Hero, Tenor. Uh, that, that was a fiver, and I did get that as well as one other book which is about somewhere that was a uh oh it's not here oh is it oh, what have i done with it anyway oh that doesn't matter because i can easily uh show it in a future uh video that was um based uh, it was a little book that came with cards and it was um based off of the terry pratchett books aimed at kids but I thought you know it's a family game so um yeah I'm looking forward to playing that actually uh yeah but it's just been an amazing weekend and definitely the you know memories that will last a lifetime and just uh you know some of the best times of my life it was actually nice to meet um Sean Connor's wife as well wasn't yeah. it and just you know you know Meeting the usual people we see, um, Ragnar, Ragnar the Reborn, uh, yeah, seeing him, so just seeing other regular YouTube members and briefly. Making new friends as well. Yeah, making you, yeah, Richard. Richard, yeah. Yeah, really great guy, you know. We, you know, uh, we played the uh, Camelot game with him, and we've seen him, you know, off and on throughout the uh, convention. It's just been awesome, and you know they really deserve a pat on the back, you know, and you know just just give them feedback. I mean, they're, they're just really. It's just been really, really great, and each and every individual that helps out with that. I mean, yeah, just amazing what they do. But that's it. This is the uh, the uh, UK Games Expo special done for this year and uh till next year <laughs>